Hello everyone, Karnasa here and welcome to build episode 5 on this build episode series and this is going to be Hermes 6 and you know what, this is actually the second time that I've attempted to build Hermes 6 because the first time KSP crashed and I lost all of my progress which was rather sad so let's say this up so that doesn't happen again and let's start working on this thing right so it's got a built-in antenna so actually yes what we're going to be working on here is going to be the lander stage of Hermes 6 once again we are going back to Venus and we hope to land because obviously our last lander wasn't really successful so we've got an antenna on this thing we need to switch the configuration to deep space because obviously we are going way further than geostationary orbit let's have a look and get up configure experiments because there are some new experiments that we have unlocked obviously we need to put some experiments on here anyway because well we've never landed at venus so we need all that we can get so let's have a look and see which has landed biomes i think yeah we're going to get the magnetometer one we are going to get the mass spectrometer two in here and i'm going to go for the two cameras and that is going to be that they are all biome specific and they all work when you are landed so that's why i have gone with those on there now whilst we're still doing science let's go and get the additional pieces of science that we need and what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to change this probe core to the pioneer version because i think it looks a little bit nicer as a lander let's make it foil because i just really like using foil okay so we need an iron mass spectrometer because we don't have one of those at the moment let's set that symmetry come on let me move you we'll have that slap bang in the middle that looks nice we'll get some thermometers some thermometers a thermometer on here somewhere let's go there i think that'll be roughly where we want it we'll get a barometer next to it and then we've got this new helium magnetometer boom so the second second magnetometer boom that we can get and i think we'll just place that on top there wonderful that looks great so let's go into the ground and let's unlock ourselves not unlock ourselves let's get ourselves some landing legs because we are going to want to have the landing legs to land on we don't want to be landing on the actual probe core okay let's scale it down to 50 percent we're gonna move these up slightly maybe a little bit further down i think about there yeah that looks that looks roughly where we want it okay we're gonna get no we don't want to go into cargo we're gonna get a couple of lights on this thing just in case we happen to land somewhere dark we'll place those Come on, let me select two-way symmetry, please. And we will place those there. That will do us, I reckon. And one thing, I want to put some cameras on just because they look cool and you can get some cool camera shots of Venus as we go through it. We'll have one there like that. And I think I'm going to have one on the top looking up as well. I think maybe we'll place it on the other side. There we go. That looks cool. That looks, well, yeah, like it should work. Now what we're going to want to do is put some parachutes on because we don't want to be crashing down onto venus too hard and actually what i might oh i don't know i'm thinking do i do i put the parachute smack bang in the middle you know what i think i am going to and we will move this iron mass spectrometer and i think yep we'll move that over there i don't really want to move that magnetometer boom though because it is very large and you'll see why i don't want to move it shortly because i want to basically encase this whole thing in a protective shell i don't know how well that works but we're gonna we're gonna give it a go we're gonna give it a go why won't that's why i need to actually use the c key rather than you know actually clicking on toggle snap because i think it what is it it's this one of these mods where is it gone eex i can't remember what that stands for expanded something <laughs> yeah that that obviously allows you to increase your symmetry and your angle snap which is really nice and really really useful for realism overhaul and if you haven't got it i would definitely suggest to get it so you can build cooler things in realism overhaul right okay let's go into the actions group so we can configure our parachute using real shoot parachute editor so we are going to be landing on venus we want to change the material to kevlar because silk and nylon are not strong enough to survive the heat of venus's atmosphere it's very hot at venus obviously being very close to the sun and it has an incredibly thick atmosphere right okay so what is the mass of this thing we are currently on 0.277 so let's put our craft mass at 0.4 i think that should do us apply settings 
Oh, one other thing I want to do. I do want to make this the previous size because that main parachute looks a little bit silly. There we go. It doesn't cost hardly anything. That's because this parachute is going to be tiny because we really don't need a big parachute at all to land on Venus because Venus obviously has such a thick atmosphere. We only really need a tiny parachute. Cool. There we go. Oh, what am I doing? There we go. I think that is most of our lander actually constructed. Let's retract these. Is there anything that I have missed? I don't think there is. So, yeah, no, I don't think there is anything that I've missed. So the next thing that we are going to want to do is actually build the protective shell around this stage. Now, how am I going to do that? What we want is we are going to want a decoupler. So let's get a decoupler up here and we're going to flip it round the opposite direction. We're going to make that diameter really small, make the length rather small as well. And then we will just pull that up just like that, just like that. Then we are going to get ourselves a interstage ring and we're going to attach the decoupler to that. We're going to make the base of this as small as we can make it. I think. Are we going to without getting sucked inside that decoupler? I don't know. Right, well, let's leave it at three at the moment. And then I want the top to be one and a half because that is going to be the size of the heat shield that we're going to be using. So let's go in and let's get a one and a half meter heat shield. I probably should have used, I don't know. I don't know if I should use a lunar rated heat shield. I do now have lunar rated heat shields unlocked, so we can use them. But unfortunately, it goes from one meter to two meter. One meter is too small, and I think two meters is too big. It's going to add way too much weight onto us. I suppose, actually, I've got tweak scale, so I could scale them down. I'm not sure if I want to do that, actually. Uh, no, I think I think we'll leave it as it is. Right, okay, so let's get the height of this down. So there looks promising. We are actually going to bring this down a little bit more. And then once again, we will go in and we will change the height so it looks like, nope, that's a little bit too high. I mean, it is floating slightly. But, you know, we're going to go with it. We're going to go with it. We're going to go with it. I think it will. I think it will work. I hope it works. Right. There we go. Now let's get that. Why has that done that? That's a really odd shape. Let's see if we can go in and do the old fairing auto shape and see. Right. Cycle start. Cycle end. No, we don't want the cycle to end all the way down there. Okay. What's the top? That, that should... I don't I, I honestly don't know why that's doing that maybe if we make the base a little bit smaller try this again hmm I don't know why that's doing that okay let's see if we make the top slightly bigger no that hasn't max size that hasn't done anything max size let's take that down a notch and we'll take the top down to 1.5 the max size so we want the max size to be 1.5 as well I guess there we go 1.5 but still, that doesn't look like it has done when I have, well, when I did this before and my save got, well, removed. Not removed, but this didn't save properly. Okay, so I think we're going to have to go with that and just deal with it. No, we definitely don't want that looking like that. And we don't want the cycle end to be coming down there. I think we're going to have to try with that. Okay, so did I configure the avionics inside? That is the important question. No, I didn't give it any mass at all. Let's give it a control mass of... I don't think we're going to need that much. Let's give it a control mass of one ton. I don't even think we'll need one ton. I reckon it'll only be about half a ton that we need for this little stage, this lander stage. Okay, so now that that's done, what we want is we want to flip this decoupler around and once again make a really small decoupler. Sweet, that looks perfect. And then we're going to go in and we're going to get a spherical tank Basically, we are copying the design of our last Venus lander, except we are going to try and do this a little bit better. We're going to try and not burn up in Venus's atmosphere, and I think we will be able to do that because I think we can get a better orbit with current technology, the new technology that we have unlocked over the course of 1961. I think a diameter of five will be perfect for that, and... 
Let's go into command and control. We need to put some RCS thrusters on here. I think, yep, that's perfect. We want that there. Let's get an engine. We're going to use this tiny little one because we don't need any more than that. This is basically all this stage is going to be is it's going to deorbit our little lander. Okay, right. Let's go in and configure the RCS. I'm going to use Aerozine and NTO. Now, I don't know which one of these is best to use, if any of them are best. I've looked at Aerozine and NTO, and it has the best specific impulse out of any of these, and that's why I've gone for that. I don't know, what, obviously there's four ones that you unlock all at the same time, and I'm not sure which one is the best to actually use out of all of those, and whether it really matters I guess like some engines use different configurations of fuel so you can kind of match the RCS fuel up to the engine that you're using but besides from that I don't really know why you'd want to change any of that okay so sweet anyway enough about those RCS thrusters let's give this a little bit of a sparkle because I like it always to look a bit shiny and let's just make sure that everything on here is what I want it to look like Okay, let's go into recoloring, make this a little bit sparklier as well. Sparklier, is that even a word? I don't know, but I'm going to use it for now. There we go, that's all placed on. And I think actually that is pretty much our lander stage complete. And I am going to test this out before we go any further. I think I'm just going to make these black as well because, you know, all of my fairings seem to be black at the moment and it kind of matches the heat shield that actually yeah i really like that that looks rather cool obviously we've got to get the orange strip up at the top as well because we have an orange strip on all of our fairings as well right okay so we want the hydrazine thruster to go at the same time as the rcs then we want that to detach there then i think we want the payload fairings to go and it will basically be or do we? I think actually, no, what we probably want to do is we probably want those to all go at once. Then we activate the parachute and then our little Venus lander will go snugly on its way down to Venus and hopefully land on there. Cool, sweet. So that's the lander done. Let's see if it works. So I'm going to go load up crash. We're going to select an orbit around Venus. I think we'll go for 200,000 meters. Yeah, we're going to... Nope, not Earth. Venus, please, Venus, that's where we hope to be going. We're already on Earth. There we go, 200,000 meters at Venus. I'm going to start this simulation, and I will see you around that rather deadly planet. Right, so here we are around Venus. I'm just going to fast forward until we are on the sunny side of the planet so we can actually see what we are doing. And then I am going to have to cheat. I'm going to have to give ourselves probe connection so that we can actually control this thing. When I actually make it here, obviously we will have an orbiter stage on as well. So that orbiter stage will be giving us communications. It will have a satellite dish that will be able to talk back to Earth and then that will be able to talk to this. But at the moment, we are going to have to go into our difficulty settings and turn off require signal for control. Accept, apply, accept, resume simulation. There we go. So... Now, if I hit that, we should have control over this thing and we want to stick ourselves prograde because, well, the engine is on the wrong way. So actually to get our orbit down, we want to go prograde. <laughs> so, yeah, it's all kind of weird, weird designs. But let's see what happens when we fire up this engine. Yep, yeah, our periaps is coming down. That's exactly what we want to see. I think I'm gonna go for a periaps of around 100 kilometers. I think that will be more than enough to bring us down into Ven Oh, uh, no, let's go 90, 90, 90. I have decided we're gonna go 90, right. And hopefully this thing should still come down when it's still sunny. I hope, because obviously we did it as the sun was rising in the sky, so we should still be able to see this thing land in Venus. And one really cool thing about Venus is it has amazing blue sunsets, right? Nope. <laughs> we are going to continue on the simulation because, yes, we can and we need to test this to make sure that we are actually able to survive the re-entry of Venus, okay? So... I want to keep this on just for a little bit. I reckon when we get down to maybe 115, maybe a little bit lower, 110. 
yeah, when we get down to 110 kilometers, I am going to detach this stage and then it can just get burnt up in the atmosphere, hopefully leaving this stage still like it will have caught Venus's atmosphere enough by that point so that we don't wobble all over the place. But this is going to be a really, really long descent, I guess, because Venus takes a really long time to get through. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk through this initial stage where we see if the heat shield works and then... I am going to cut to the vehicle assembly building after that. I am going to see if it lands successfully with the parachutes. But do you know how long it takes to land on Venus? It takes like 20 minutes or something ridiculous because it just takes so long to get down to the surface of Venus. And I do not want to make you sit through all of that. And it would just be a really long video if I did that. So, yeah, I'm going to basically see if this heat shield works i'm going to chat over it and as soon as we know that it does or doesn't then we can go back to the vehicle assembly building but we should start really feeling the bite of venus's atmosphere soon i would have thought well we are on 123 kilometers now and we are starting to lose a bit of speed so is our ablator being affected no we still have full ablator so obviously we're not heating up too much at the moment i'm going to get rid of landing and we'll see the heat stage what our critical temperatures haven't gone up so yeah we're really not feeling the bite of venus's atmosphere yet i am sure that will change very 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 shortly because well we're at 115 kilometers now i am in four times physical time warp just to try and go through this as fast as possible and i think at 110 what are we looking oh yeah we're starting to get charred ablator so we are starting to use that heat shield it is doing its job at 110 kilometers and well we are descending rather fast our periaps is now below the surface we are definitely going to be landing and it looks like we are struggling to maintain that a little bit right Okay, so we're starting to really get that heating effect. Everything looks like it's working at the moment. Do I dare stage this little bit? I think I'm going to try. Let's see what happens. It could smash back into us. Here we go. Yep, nope. That didn't get very far at all, and that has caused all kinds of wobble and... Oh, wow, I don't know. <laughs> oh, dear. So... Yeah, what I think... Oh, I think we might blow up due to aerodynamic stress. Is that going to happen? No. The, okay, right. Let's get rid of those fairings because they seem to be what's causing most of the issue here. There we go. The fairings have gone, but now we look rather strange. What I think I have learned from this is I'm going to attach a retro, a solid rocket motor onto that upper stage so that when it goes, it will go off at kind of like an angle rather than being stuck straight to us. But it looks like this has actually worked rather well. So I think we are going to be able to do this. Let's speed it up again a little bit and just make sure. But yeah, no, we have come out and it looks like we are going to be on the safe side. Now, another thing I probably should do as well is add a solid rocket motor to this heat shield because when we decouple from that, there is a very high chance that it is going to smash into us. So that is something else that I think I will have to add when we go to the vehicle assembly building. But it looks like we're through the worst of the atmosphere now. Let's see what happens when we do decouple all of this and see if I do need that retro rocket. Here we go. Oh, see? Yep, yep. I thought that might happen. Did we actually lose anything? Did we lose anything? Let's have a look. Heat shield one. No, we didn't. No, nothing actually broke. But still, we would rather not have that happen when we do this actual landing. Anything that we can avoid, we are going to try and avoid. And then obviously we can arm the parachute. And then, yeah, now comes the really long descent into Venus's atmosphere. And I will see you back in the VAB after I have completed all of this. Right, so here we are back in the vehicle assembly building and there were a few tiny little edits that I want to make to this thing. I am going to move this up a little bit and we also want to attach one solitary rocket that will send it spinning off in that direction, I guess. <laughs> I guess that works. I think, I hope. Let's, let's have a look. Let's get you on. Is that symmetric? Is that... 
pointing that way exactly. Yep, I think, yeah. Uh, it should be fine. It should be fine. Okay, and we also want to put one on the heat shield because that heat shield obviously came crashing into us. Right. Okie dokie. How is this going to work? So we're going to be flying in and then we want this to go off in some direction, I guess. Okay, let's put that there. Let's see if we can do something like this. Change the angle of it slightly so that when it goes, we hopefully shouldn't it come crashing back into us. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to place it over this side because because there's less actually involved over this side of the actual probe so yeah it makes more sense to put it over here okay so let's get that in a little bit further and then that way when we decouple hopefully it will kind of shoot off like that and go flying into venus's atmosphere very very nicely there we go i think that is all that we need to do for the lander then sweet actually i'm gonna change the color of this because it i, I don't like just the that looking like that okay right so that all works. That does look rather odd, but it should hopefully all work. Let's save that. And now what we need to do, well, we need to work on the orbiter. So basically on the orbiter, all I'm gonna want is all of the scientific experiments that we can fit that we're gonna be able to do in space, as well as a satellite dish and a communitron to communicate to this when it flies over. Or it, I think we might actually be able to do that within the within the satellite that the probe core that we will use so this thing is a meter and a half wide let's get an interstage on this actually before we do that let's get a decoupler that goes on the bottom of the heat shield we will make this we'll make this small because we don't need this particularly large I don't think anyway right there we go i think yeah that, that that'll work that will do us because then what we're gonna do is we're gonna place an interstage underneath it and we want that section of the interstage to be there we're gonna set this to two meters i guess to escape not escape but kind of mean that none of the fairings kind of go into there okay we need a little bit of height on that because we need to clear that top bit right actually i'm gonna make the top about a meter yeah i think i think that will do us the top about a meter and then what we want is we want our orbiter to actually be up on the top now let's have a look and see what we can get up here let's get that height up a little bit more actually right so that looks like it's gonna be promising i think let's get some solar panels on here we need some solar panels so that we can actually gain power. I am going to be using solar panels for this because obviously, as I said, we've got an RTG on the lander because of Venus's atmosphere. But we might as well use the solar panels up in space where we're going to be very close to the sun and there should be nothing in our way. Sweet. So let's have a look. What design do I want? One by two. One by two. Let's have a look. Okay, let's extend those. Oh, they look pretty neat. I love RO Solar. RO Solar looks so cool, the stuff that we have in there. Okay, right. We want to check how much celestial body we want Venus. So 120 watts. That's going to be more than enough. That's going to be a crazy amount. So yeah, those, those will definitely be fine. Let's put this par parabolic, parabolic antenna on the top let's make sure that we are able to talk to earth so we're going to get the antenna planning gui celestial bodies we want venus so there may be a chance that we are unable to talk if we have it at this power if venus is obviously far away if we have it at that power then we should always have communications with this probe and that's exactly what we want because we do not ever want to run out of communications because then that would almost certainly mean that the mission will fail and that would be rather upsetting right okay so i don't think we need an engine on this stage what i am gonna put on there though and i'm gonna move these to a 45 degree angle if it lets me no i don't want five of them i want to move them to a 45 degree angle there we go what i am going to put on there anyway as i got distracted i am going to put some rcs thrusters on there just so we can change 
where we're facing so we can face into the sun and make the full use out of these solar panels right there we go that should be fine there and of course we have to make it foil and color it in sparkly gold because all of my probes are sparkly gold and foil so we're going to use aerosene and nco on this as well we are going to keep because we're using solar panels when we go around the night we are going to have to have a bit of electric charge so what i'm going to do i think i'm going to put maybe two and a half thousand units let's have i think that should that should do us i guess and we've got the uhf band on there which is going to talk to our our lander that's fine that's what we want it to be doing let's make the top a little bit smaller so this is actually going to look nigh on identical to Hermes 5, but with a little bit of a upgrade, I guess. And we'll see if we can actually properly capture at Venus, which will be really nice. And not worry about Scansat. We don't have to worry about Scansat. But what we do have to worry about is we are going to be worrying about the science that our orbiter is going to do. So what we want, we're going to want to have a basic tv camera because we've not got one of those over at venus yet in orbit we want a radiation detector too because once again we don't have one of those in orbit let's have a look i think we've not got an infrared spectrometer yet so let's get one of those and i think maybe a mass spectrometer too have i already put that in no i haven't and we could also do with a magnetometer too. But the thing is, the trick is, where can we actually put that on this? So where can we put that on this? Let's place one there. I mean, it's going to make the symmetry all kinds of weird. But I think it should be fine. We're not really going to do much with this. We're not going to fire up its engines or anything. Let's release, take the force percent down of this so it doesn't go flying off. Take it down a little bit further actually this thing is a very small payload very small section of this rocket okay let's not forget about changing it to deep space avionics as well because that would be terrible if we forgot to do that there we go let's set it to one ton and yeah i think that's pretty much all we're gonna need for this stage let's retract those solar pa oh i don't think i can use those solar panels i think they're gonna get in the way of the payload fairing of this section let's have a look and see if we get another set of these curved solar panels i mean that looks like it fits we don't need the density up on this i am going to keep the density up on the ones in there though just because we're going to be using those to enter venus's atmosphere so probably the better they are the better chance we have of actually making a successful landing bearing auto shape let's do this let's get the cycle start to go up a bit is that what i want maybe no that is not what i want that is not what i want at all oh there we go that actually just about fits does look a little bit odd though but then practicality overlooks i guess yeah i think i think that that is I'm, I'm gonna make this bigger i'm gonna make this bigger i'm gonna make it the size of that there we go and then there's no weird looking hole in the middle sweet so that's our orbiter we actually need to put some fuel in here let's not forget that because otherwise these rcs thrusters are not going to be doing anything at all hang on why did the electric charge go down I could have sworn I put two and a half thousand in here and let's get aerosene and NTO and hopefully that stage should have enough to kind of just position itself when we need to I don't think it's going to have a lawful lot but then we don't really need an awful lot yeah I think that's us done let's save it let's save it and now this is going to be really really tricky actually figuring out the staging of this section so i might go a little bit quiet during this because yeah it's going to be really difficult to figure everything out so i'll try and talk but so yeah we want that interstage ring to go at the same time as that decoupler and then we want that to go as well those separation motors right so that separation motor that's up there wants to go at the same time as that 
then that separation motor wants to go at the same time as that and oh would you look at that i think <laughs> i think that might actually be all we need to do so let's do a little bit of a save whilst we are in oh hello what's happened hello what is what has gone on what has gone on what has got why is it oh don't be doing don't be doing some silly breaky stuff it really doesn't like me shift clicking this I just want to move it up a bit so we can actually build the rest of the rocket around it. Oh, but the frozen game is real. Oh, please don't crash again. It's already crashed once trying to build this thing. If it crashes again, this is going to be really upsetting and it's looking like it is heading that way. See, why is all my staging messed up? I've not All I've done is picked up the entire spacecraft that we've built so far and I just want to move it up a little bit. But Kerbal doesn't seem to be wanting to do that. It doesn't seem to be playing nice. Right, I have clicked. So hopefully I'm just going to drop it there and I'm going to build it around that. Let's not try anything else too risky because I don't want this to mess up. Oh, wow. Suddenly there was like a million parts of that. That was really bizarre. That was really bizarre indeed. So let's have a look. What's our avionics looking like at the moment? Why is that not working? Oh, I have two of everything. Another weird bug that sometimes happens and I'm not sure. So we've got two tons. We're going to need some avionics on this stage so let's get some procedural avionics on there whack that on there I can't actually remember how wide this was 1.8 meters so let's get this up to 1.8 meters set it to tank type service module 3 we're gonna go for deep space configuration again just because you know we're gonna be in deep space i guess so we definitely need that deep space configuration right so a separate tank separate structure modular tank is what we want because we want some hypergolic fuels in this stage because well it's going to take a long time to get to venus so if we have stuff like kerolox or hydrolox it'll have all boiled off by the time we get there and this is what we're going to use to do our capture burn okay so diameter of 1.8 let's have a quick look and expand this so Venus is going to take 4,600 Delta V to get to Venus and then about 3,500 to actually capture. Sweet. So we need about 3,500 Delta V. This is a lot of Delta V. I hope this mission, we can do this mission and I hope it can be launched on an Icarus. It might not be able to. That would be rather devastating because I've already designed a new series of rockets this year. The, well... This will be coming out before the second half of 1961, but there is a, a new launch vehicle that I have designed in 1961 as well. So, right, I think what we're actually going to do, because I think it is the best engines that we've got at the moment, we're going to go with RCS thrusters. And we're going to set them to Aerosene and NTO, because that seems to be what we're doing at the moment. Okay, sweet. So let's fill this up with Aerosene and NTO. And that gives us a lot. Wow, that gives us a lot indeed. 1,304, I don't think that's correct. 3,755. 775 even, I can read. So, yeah, that's a little bit too much. What's the burn time on that? 991 seconds. But that is roughly what we're gonna need. Okay, okay, okay. And how much do we weigh? Six tons. Oh, that's a little bit too much. That's a little bit too much because I don't think we're going to get that hydrolock stage at just six tons. Okay, right. We might have to shed some weight somewhere. That's, that, that might be one thing. Right, let's change this down to 500 and we might see ourselves get a load more. So 3,730. Wait, that's hardly changed. Hang on. 3,427. That is a kind of a, like a nice kind of amount that I think would be good for this stage. And that weighs 5.4 tons. So I guess we can get 7 tons with our Hydrolox stage. I still don't think that's going to be enough. Have I got anything in here? So, well, we don't need that all the way up there. We can get rid of some of that. And I am going to get rid of some of that. I think we're probably only going to need about 30 utilization. So yeah, we don't need all of that fuel in there. Is there anything else that we can get rid of? Because this, this is, this, yeah, look at that. Why have we got 60,000 electric charge on there? We definitely do not need that. We only need probably like 50. There we go. That's still not done an awful lot to our... <laughs> 
Our Delta V for this stage, though. Oh, well, hopefully we can... Oh, is that the magnetometer boom sticking out? Oh, no, I didn't want that to happen. But, well, we tested it anyway, and it, it worked. So we're just going to ignore that for now. Yeah, that's all fine. That's... Yeah, okay, so we're on 3,636 with a 730 second burn. So it's going to be a really long burn, but then I was expecting that with these kind of engines. 3,521, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. I think that will be roughly where we actually want it to be. And what are we on? We're under five tons. That's brilliant. That's kind of really where we want to be, I think. I think under five tons should do us the trick. So let's get ourselves... Some RCS thrusters on this stage. I don't want to put a thrust limiter on there. I don't actually even know if that works in Realism Overhaul. I've never actually tried. Okay, Aerozine and NTO. That will do us the job rather nicely. And this, I don't think we're going to want this as large as this is. <laughs> so that might save us some weight as well. Let's actually, yeah, let's make it smaller now. Let's make the length down to that size. Okay, what weight are we on now? Still just under five tons. Okay, so that's going to go at the same time as those. Right, sweet. So I do want to launch this on an Icarus. I want to try and launch this on an Icarus. I think it can be done. I think it can be done. Those may be famous last words, but we're going to try anyway. So let's get a interstage again. So this is going to be our stage that gets to Venus, and we are going to capture at Venus with this stage. I wonder... I might remove that procedural avionics and just up the tonnage in these two stages so we don't have to have that there. Actually, yeah, let's do that now and let's see kind of what that does to this because I think we should be able to. So what are we on? We're on 4.9 tons. So we've only got two tons of avionics at the moment. So we're going to need to get a little bit more from somewhere. Let's try getting another... Well, that can go up to two. If we can get them both up to two and a half, then that obviously will do us just fine. Let's try and sneak in here and get to get to this procedural probe core. Is that the right one? What's the control mass? One ton. Yes, yeah, that can go up. Oh no, that's going up rapidly. Let's put that. Let's put it just a bit over five tons, just in case. Just in case, because we really wouldn't want to get all the way to Venus now, would we? And find out that we have no control. That would be rather upsetting. And there we go. We've got three and a half thousand meters per second of delta V. What are we on? We're still just under five tons as before. Okay, right. Now, let's get this into stage ring that I said I was going to do. Let's set our symmetry down to one. And yeah, there we go. And I think... What was the top? The top was 1.8, wasn't it? Yes, it was. So let's change the top down to 1.8. And I think I'm going to have two meters for the base. Now, the reason why I want two meters for the base is because I have balloon tanks already that are tooled to two meters. So that should hopefully mean that we don't have to spend a lot of money tooling this next tank for this next stage. Diameters when you're tooling, if you have one diameter already tooled, it will make every other tank of that same diameter a lot cheaper to tool. Just so, yeah, I think there was a tip in the opening screen of Realism Overhaul when I, d I don't know if it's still there, and it's like something it says something like stretching out tanks to save on tooling costs. So, yeah, that's that's why that does that. Yeah, you do save a lot of money if you stretch out your tanks rather than doing new diameters. Okay, so this is going to be our transfer stage to Venus. Well, I had to go away quickly for a second there, but let's crack on back with this. I think I was just talking about doing our transfer stage to Venus, which is this. So, yeah. This is going to use one of those RL10 engines, and we have unlocked a new upgrade to that series of engines. So we've got the third upgrade to the RL10, which I think is the A33, and that gets... Look at, look at that specific impulse. 444 seconds in vacuum. That's absolutely brilliant. And it also reduces the ignition failure rate quite a lot. We get more burn time out of it. It goes up from 430 to... 470 seconds so hopefully this will be the thing that powers ourselves powers ourselves powers us on the way to venus let's have a quick look and fill this up with liquid hydrogen how much are we weighing now eight tons we're gonna need a bit more than that we need four and a half thousand oh this is not looking promising at all 
not looking promising at all at all at all at all i think we very well may need a rocket that gets us more than 12 tons up which is gonna be really sad okay 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 let's stretch the length out of this because like i said i had two meter balloon tanks already and what are we on we're on 10 tons oh yeah no this isn't gonna do it we're still way off way off oh damn that's annoying that's really annoying that's really really annoying okay let's just sort that staging out a little bit oh how hard is it to land something on venus i mean it's easy enough to land on there if we came screaming in with a lunar rated heat shield we would be able to land but then we wouldn't be able to talk back to earth we need an orbiter in orbit it might be wise to send two separate missions but then we would have no talk control over over our actual lander unless they arrived there at very similar times and that's that's a worry to do so we're yeah we're still miles off we're still really really far off really far off i i think actually having a i, I think we're gonna have to go for a bigger diameter let's go for two and a half two and a half by four point nine five eight oh there we go. Well, we got 470 seconds on that stage, and we still need an extra 1,000 delta V. 1,000 meters per second of delta V. So, yeah. And we are already way over 12 tons. Okay. Right. So, what can we do? What can we do? Let's get that down to three. Oh, if we get that down to two and a half thousand. Yeah, no, we're still not there. And we, we well... That's all right, I guess, for two and a half thousand. Can we do it on two and a half thousand? I really don't know. I really don't know. It's going to be really tricky. That's going to be really tricky. I wish I could test this entire thing, but that's just, well, unfeasible because I'd have to wait for a Venus transfer window and... Oh, okay. What's the burn time on that now? 391 seconds. What if I change the diameter of this again oh wow yeah oh oh wow hello hello indeed that's just given us loads more delta v so that thing was obviously really heavy let's make this as small as we possibly can change the force percent down this is just sheer weight saving at the moment that we yeah though that that's a lot better that's a lot better that's looking much better and we're getting gonna get much more delta v because of that okay sweet so let's obviously get rid of the density of those and we're up to four and a half thousand on that stage and 2700 on this stage let's cut that down to 2500 and then we're up to 4600 it's whether 2600 meters per second of delta v is enough because i can't really we can we can get more because well we're only at 11 11 tons so actually let's over I, I hate doing this but let's overburn the rl rl 10 and then we're gonna get some more more fuel in this stage to get that up to 2800 2000 no 2761 that's a really big overburn of that but oh well oh well <laughs> And oh, of course, we're still good. Well, we still need to add avionics to this stage, so that could change a lot of things. Oh, oh, well, no, I don't want the avionics there. Although we could stick them there. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's stick them there. We'll stick the avionics. Come on. Change my symmetry down to one. There we go. Put that back on. Gonna obviously have to do symmetry back on that again. We're gonna want near earth. We only need near earth for this stage, but we also need to make the base a little bit thicker. How wide was this? Two and a half meters. So let's make the base two and a half meters like that. There we go. And how has that changed things? Let's change things for the worse, obviously, because we've got loads and loads of electric charge in there, which we can get rid of. 
We don't need that electric charge. We need none of that electric charge, if I'm going to be particularly honest. And we can get rid of the antenna as well. So, electric charge. I'm going to put 20 in just, you know, just so we have at least a little bit in there. But we don't need the antenna or anything like that. And we're going to give ourselves some tonnage. It doesn't particularly like this tonnage. What were we on already? Oh, Hang on, there we go. Oh, hello. Did that just make that bigger? I think it did. I was too busy looking up here. Supports, vessel, avionics are sufficient. Are they going to be sufficient when we put all of that on? Yes, they are. We are creeping back down to territories that we don't want to be in, though. And our mass is also creeping up. Oh, this is... This is hard. This is hard. I need... I need... A bigger launch vehicle <laughs> that would make this a lot easier but i'm gonna try and stick with the icarus okay spherical tank i don't want a spherical tank i want a radial tank we're gonna put two of these on this is basically a centaur stage move these up a little bit move that there actually you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna give this amount we're gonna try and go for a dome lovely dome there we go looks wonderful that can go there like that then we'll stick these two here like that and we are going to lower the size because currently that is a little bit too big we do not want them that large let's get those down to 0 0.5 make the tank a little bit better i have done the right tanks for everything haven't i service module three this is yeah Okay, I, I'm honestly just trying to find wherever I can ways of losing weight and I, I'm not sure if I can do it anymore. I think I have pushed this rocket, well this spacecraft, to the absolute maximum. Although, why have we suddenly just got 4,979 meters per second? Oh, it's because that dome has added a load more. Okay, so we're going to need to get this back down to 470? 470? maybe a little bit more than 470 479 and <laughs> we don't want our little floating floating balls we're going to put some mli layers on this as well because this is going to be in space for a little bit if we launch there is a very good chance that yeah this will remain in space for a little while okay let's fill that up with aerosene and nto god our delta v is just going down all the time that's not very not very nice not very nice indeed but we do oh do we do we want some bigger ones yes i think we do because i think this stage will require them so let's get some bigger rcs thrusters and we're gonna put the good old aerosene and nto in there and i think yeah we're gonna take this down to like two and a half thousand that's still not enough surely we should be able to get a decent enough orbit though Take it down even more. 2,000 would be enough. 2,200 would be enough. Let's go for that. Yeah. That's a real shame. I don't think we're going to get quite a nice orbit around Venus as we would like. But hopefully this will work. I really hope this works. I really, really, really do hope this works. Okay. So, I believe... That is going to be pretty much this build. Because now all I've got to do is attach the launch vehicle, which is obviously going to be Icarus 1. And I've got to paint it. Yeah. But I think I will save the painting. Well, what I will do is I will paint it now. And then you will see the finished product when we actually launch this thing. So I think I'm going to end this episode there. Otherwise, this is going to go on for a really, really long time. Because, well, I think it's been like 45 minutes already or so, judging by what I've seen. But yes. If you have enjoyed this episode, why not give it a like? If you have really enjoyed this episode and would like to keep up with the content on my channel, please do consider subscribing. I have been Karnasa, and I will see you later.